Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And today I got a very special guest all the way out in Seattle. We have Corey Hong with Stably. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Of course. Well, looking forward to diving in and learning a lot about what you got going on with Stably. But before we do, why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, my name is Corey. I'm the CEO of Stably. Uh, Stably is a Seattle-based uh, fintech startup. Uh, we got seed funding back in April of 2018 to create a, a U.S. dollar peg stablecoin. Uh, and a stablecoin, for those who don't know what it is, is essentially a, uh, a cryptocurrency whose value is pegged to something that people uh, view as quote-unquote stable, like uh, fiat currency or gold, for example. And uh, so we uh, create a, a U.S. dollar-backed stablecoin called USDS. Uh, we released it at the end of 2018. Uh, within two months, we uh, listed it on uh, uh, Binance, Bittrex, a lot of the major exchanges. Okay. Uh, we closed right. another uh, million dollar round of funding uh, in 2019 as well. And then, you know, we uh, kind of grew the team from there. Uh, recently, on that. we That's got. Deal. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you. We, um, you know, got into tokenizing other different asset <clears throat> asset classes. Uh, recently, instead of just fiat currency, uh, within fiat currencies, we're uh, tokenizing different type of currencies. Like uh, uh, recently, we launched a Canadian dollar stablecoin with a Canadian uh, exchange partner. Uh, right now, we're working on Vietnamese dong and Filipino peso, as well as uh, Bahamian dollar uh, peg uh, stablecoin. Wow. Uh, in addition to that, we're working with a major uh, gold dealer partner to create a uh, go back uh, token. And then uh, subsequent to that, we will follow up with, you know, silver and platinum and et cetera. Um, so, you know, we're, you know, keeping our hands pretty busy, tokenizing a bunch of different stuff. And uh, we're not just doing it under our brand. Uh, we also, you know, work with our enterprise clients who are, you know, uh, other businesses that have existing clients and networks or ad sets already, and they're looking to issue their own brand of digital money. And so then we, we step in with our own technology and expertise and know-how, and um, we make it happen in a couple of months. Uh, for, for most projects, for some projects that are a little bit more tailored or like larger scale, it might take like up to a whole year to uh, build something and roll out, you know, right. which is uh, the nature of these uh, enterprise deals. So yeah, uh, you know, we uh, we got into uh, you know basically tokenizing the, the asset tokenization business. Uh, recently this year, we closed another round of funding for another million dollars. So to in total so far, I think we've closed uh, almost uh, three million dollar, and uh, we uh, expanded to Vietnam recently. Um, we got a new office where we hire new developers and employees, and thankfully we did it right when you know, COVID broke out. Uh, so I, I flew out with my team back in uh, February to Vietnam. Right. And uh, COVID right. broke out. So I was stuck there for probably, you know, uh, almost uh, five months. But, you know, uh, Vietnam did a really great job at containing COVID and uh, eradicating it within the country. So, you know, life went on as normal after a few short weeks of, uh, you know, lockdown. And uh, yeah, there's literally was no COVID. Uh, first, people were still wearing mask after they came out of quarantine, but or lockdown, but within a few weeks, you know, less and less people start wearing masks and, you know, life got back to normal and everyone's like, okay, cool. Let's start traveling places. But well, man, we, we went traveling everywhere in Vietnam. Meanwhile, uh, you know, the whole world was dealing with COVID and all that stuff. Right. So. And, and, and pure lockdown and, and, and real quick on that. So just to kind of go back just a little bit and thank you for expanding upon what Stably is and everything that y'all working on and a really, really, really exciting things definitely on y'all's horizon. And we're going to dive deeper into that, but before we do, you know, how, when was your first introduction into the <coughs> cryptocurrency and blockchain space? Like when did you first learn about it? And then, you know, before creating Stably, like what made you decide to get involved in this space? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, uh, First heard about Bitcoin back in 2013 when I was still a college student, and uh, it was my buddy uh, Andy, uh, Andy Chemis. He uh, was a fellow uh, student uh, in one of my classes, and he taught me about crypto and Bitcoin. 
And to be honest, at that point, I, it was about the same time I got into penny stocks. So, you know, Bitcoin seemed like penny stocks to me. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I got a couple hundred bucks. I started trading Bitcoin. And it was like 2013, man. It was like nothing back then. And I didn't even understand what Bitcoin was back then. It's just It was just something tradable, you know. Right. And I was just a, a college student speculator. So, um, but, you know, initially it was good. Like the first month I was actually doing really well with Bitcoin. And, you know, I started learning more about it. But I never could, you know, got over the fact that, you know, how could something that it's like a piece of digital money could be worth anything and how is it worth like i couldn't really indicate you know where the value came from i was just you know my mind was this thing is just like penny stock it goes up it goes yeah, down yeah. you know you just trade it you make some money then you get out um and then you know 2013 i didn't get out soon and now 2013 was like the first one of the first major crashes and yep. oh whew, and i lost uh i lost pretty much like 90 percent 80 90 percent of my uh bitcoin hole it was only a few hundred bucks you know but right after that i i didn't you know i got i lost interest in uh crypto or bitcoin and then you know uh i started getting into trading stocks and etfs and uh you know option futures derivatives you know the traditional type of instrument and that was between 2014 and 2016. Okay, mm-hmm. so for three years, I went on uh, trading traditional s- instruments and I picked up algorithmic trading. Uh, I learned how to uh, code in Python and uh, uh, easy language, which is a uh, uh, very uh, uh, powerful language used on a platform called TradeStation, which allows you to do a lot of uh, quantitative and algorithmic trading. Right. Um, I built my own trading algorithm. Uh, for stocks, ETFs, uh, even VIX derivatives, which was something that I was trading a lot. I was making, uh, you know, north of uh, 50% a year net of like all my trading fees and hedging costs. <laughs> for for uh, everyone listening, if you don't understand trading, I'll, I just want to make that point very clear. That is amazing. That is incredible. So sorry, C- continue. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I actually published a lot of this stuff back in, uh, way back in the day. If you go search uh, Google Quantopian, Corey, uh, K-O-R-Y, uh, you can find a lot of my old Quantopian posts going back from like 2016 or whatever about, you know, uh, trading stocks and VIX derivatives and all kind of stuff. So that was kind of like, you know, what I was getting into way back in the day. And so, uh, anyway, I was trading this particular VIX derivatives, uh, strategy that was yielding 50% plus a year, uh, net of fees and hedging costs. Um, but the thing is, I didn't learn about hedging myself. No, it was uh, in 2016, I met my co-founder of Stably today. Uh, his name's David. He was an engineer for Amazon back then. I was still a data analyst for PitchBook. But we met at a algorithmic trading meetup in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was presenting my strategy. Uh, you know, I was presenting a VIX trading strategy that was yielding, you know, uh, like 70% plus a year, uh, net of trading fees, but I wasn't hedging. And so David, you know, after the presentation came up to me, he pointed out, yo, you know, your, your strategy, it has like a, like a, min- like a small chance of like blowing up because you're not hedging and it might not happen, but if it does happen, then, you know, you, you get blown the hell out. <laughs> so, yeah. so I was like, okay, so how do I hedge this? And he taught me how to hedge it. I mean, Hey, go buy out the money put for uh, this inverse VIX ETF and uh, you're good and you'll be good. And I was like, well, shit, those, those options are not expensive at all. It was basically insurance. And so basically my strategy was yielding like 70% plus. I bought these put and made the return drop down to 50% plus, but then I'm completely 100% hedged. Like nothing could absolutely go wrong at this point. Right, you couldn't get crushed by it. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you well, have- Well, basically the theory, the theory of the strategy is you know, in the event, in the event that a nuke hit, you know, a major U.S. city, this strategy would not, this strategy would either, either it would break even or it would profit a lot. And because yeah. we were hedging yeah. it, there was no way in hell that it would, uh, you know, lose money. And in the event that that doesn't happen or like, you know, that's like the worst black swan event that could happen basically, you know, and we were even like hedged for that. So anyway, um, we were doing that back in 2016. And then 2017, you know, I started noticing that uh, the algorithms we use for VIX trading, actually, uh, they transfer really well over to crypto. Uh, 
came to find out crypto had a lot of the same uh, price behavior as VIX derivative. And that what, what that behavior is, is called uh, trend persistency, meaning uh, momentum, uh, meaning if something is heading somewhere, it tends to like head toward that way. Uh, and for those who don't know, uh, you know, in quantitative trading, there's usually, you know, only uh, there's in terms of directional trading, uh, there's usually two types of strategy. There's momentum and mean reversion, whereas momentum is your trend following. You're following the trend and you're, you know, trying to ride that trend out. Whereas mean reversion is, you know, you're doing, you're trying to buy when the trend is weak, waiting for it to mean revert to, uh, you know, uh, the, the mean basically. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I noticed that both VIX derivatives and crypto has really high trend persistency, uh, ratings. Like there, there was a lot of, you know, quantitative indicators that we could use to identify this. Um, so basically, you know, VIX derivative was here, crypto was here. And I was like, well, shit, why aren't we trading crypto again? And then, you know, David was like, well, we should. And then, you know, we, we started trading crypto again in 2017. Yeah. Um, Not a bad then, time you know, to get in either. Oh, man. That time, look, I don't know if it was my, if it was our algorithm that did well or if it was the bubble. <laughs> either way, we did really well. You know, I was, you know, I was sitting in my day job, one, one, one side, one screen crunching numbers for my work. Yeah, it was great. I was like freaking like watching my algorithm just going ham, you know, just like <laughs> up like 30% a day. Yeah. <laughs> All my coworkers were like, man, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> I have uh, no it was idea. Good. It was a good year. Um, so, so fast then, forward uh, us just a, just a little bit on that, right? So, so 17, things are starting to go well. You know, you're starting to make money in crypto. Of course, the bubble happens. At which point did y'all come together and say like, okay, I think where the intermediary of this is, trying to create a stable coin that can then help this area. So how, how did you get to that transition? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, this one time I read an article about Tether back in 2017 and about, you know, how, uh, about some of the potential issue that it had. And then I, I read up on some forum posts, you know, this is 2017. So everything was like YouTube video, uh, forum posts, reviews and shit like that. Community forums, yeah. uh, telegram groups, that kind of thing. So I read up all, all I could about Tether. Um, and, you know, I came to the conclusion that this thing is shady. And, you know, if I leave my money in it, I, I could potentially lose everything one day, even though that it seems stable right now. Um, you know, so Tether, for those who don't know, is the first stable coin in the world issued by an unregulated entity that, uh, you know, the stable coin is the largest in the world right now. It has over 90% of the market share. However, the entity remains unregulated and, you know, uh, there's been accusation that has been engaging in some potentially fraudulent uh, activity. Um, and so that's the whole controversy. You know, there's an ongoing investigation by the New York uh, Attorney General. Uh, so we uh, will we'll see what, you know, what happens. For the time right. being, Tether is still trading at a dollar. Everybody is still using Tether. It's still 90, uh, you know, over 90 percent of the market right now. So um, it is what it is. Uh, but, you know, back in 2017, uh, when I read about that, uh, I told David, you know, I was like, uh, I don't think we should be buying Tether. You know, we should find another stable coin to put our money into. And so we looked for another stable coin. Guess what? I couldn't find anything. And there was, there was nothing else other than USDT back in 2017. There were new bits and uh, bit USD, but those were like, those were like, um, Synthetic stable coins, they're not organic. Uh, what I define as organic, you know, it's a stable coin that's actually backed by US dollar. A synthetic stable coin is like, you know, something that's pegged to like the benchmark, but is backed by something else. And so you have to, so like, it's financially engineered this connection, this, this valuation between the two, uh, the backing and, you know, the token. So those are a little bit more shaky. And, you know, we didn't, we thought those were even more <laughs> riskier than Tether. And we were right, you know, uh, Nubits basically crashed to nothing. And uh, whoever had money in Nubits basically lost everything. Yeah. Uh, BitUSD yeah. was very unstable. Many times it lost its peg, like, you know, for significant period of time. And it doesn't have a lot of uh, liquidity either. So anyway, uh, that's when we realized, hey, there's a hole in the market. Maybe we need to fill this hole. You know, maybe we should do something about this. And this was like... Um, fall of 2017. And so, you know, me and him and uh, 
some other guy, we got together, we wrote a white paper about, you know, how creating a stable coin backed by US dollar that's transparent and trustworthy and audited and issued by a regulated, uh, you know, uh, entity would, you know, usher in the future of, you know, the financial revolution, basically, uh, yeah. with the help of blockchain technology. So uh, uh, we set out to do it. I quit my job at the end of 2017. Um, David took a little bit longer to quit his job because, you know, he worked at Amazon. It was pretty cushy over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he was a software engineer at Amazon. When I got, when I got uh, venture funding, actually before we, got, uh, before we got venture funding for our seed round, uh, David decided to actually quit and, you know, join our startup because at that point it was very, it seemed very likely that we were going to get funding. And uh, I think he turned down an offer from Google. He had an offer from Google to uh, go and be an engineer over there. And I think, you know, they were paying like 200K plus for like yeah. people at his firm. So, you know, he turned that down. He he became a co-founder, uh, my CTO for Stably actually. And, uh, and we raised 500 grand uh, of seed round to start the company. And then, you know, it, uh, it all, it all off, off to the races from there. there. Yeah. Yeah. So, happened. I mean, I'll tell you what, the timing of what you're doing definitely is really good because there's an absolute boom in the stable coin market right now. I mean, just, you look left and right in the, in the media, it's a lot of people are talking about why there's just so much opportunity in the stable coin um, space right now. So can you kind of speak to that right now of, of, of why you think stable is positioned to really capitalize on just all the attention that's kind of being put in this space right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, the crypto industry has evolved a lot, crypto blockchain in general, uh, we've gone from like you know Bitcoin's birth in 2009 through a whole decade, more than a decade now uh, of evolutionary you know progress, where uh, Ethereum was developed. You had smart contract, you could build smart uh, you know decentralized application on the blockchain, and then we had stable coins coming out. You know now there are regulated P, uh, entities again to stable coin, and then recently you know the Fed just announced that banks now can crypto uh, yep. custody crypto. So, uh, so, so, you know, we come a long way, uh, and now is, I think we're just right, uh, at, you know, the point where, uh, we can start transforming the existing financial system, to, uh, you know, with the help of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency, uh, you know, economy, uh, globally, because the U S is leading the way in this. They literally just says, Hey, uh, banks can now start, uh, custodying crypto. Right. So, yeah. That's the first step. The next step is, you know, all these banks are going to be connected by stable coins. That's why they're they're they're, they're cussing the crypto in the first place. It's not to, it's not to, um, you know, custody Bitcoin or whatever. Maybe it is as well. Definitely it is. But, you know, uh, the ability for all these banks to be connected by stable coins or maybe a federal uh, digital dollar. That's you know, very very uh, huge. Uh, value and, you know, enormous potential there. Right. Um, a ton of use cases. <laughs> yeah. So right now we, with that said, uh, we think that now it's time to start tokenizing more asset classes. Uh, whereas before we, you know, did a really good job on US dollar, right? Everybody did US dollar right after Tether. And uh, I think that market is quite saturated and, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's growing, it's maturing. Uh, you know, Tether still has more than 90% of the market right there. So it's not really growing like organically as it should be. But um, for all intents and purposes, you know, the whole stablecoin industry is now uh, $10 billion plus. Yeah. Right? And it so now let's talk grow. about, yeah, yeah, exactly. So now let's talk about other asset classes. I mean, before we talk about that, we can talk about other types of foreign currency, right? Uh, you know, Chinese yuan, Japanese yen, uh, Hong Kong dollar, and all this stuff. Um, each one of these countries and these markets have their own uh, local ecosystem, and uh, you know, uh, a local, a locally uh, denominated stablecoin would integrate uh, much uh, more efficiently into these ecosystem as opposed to you know a uh, foreign denominated stablecoin. And, you know, for adoption purposes as well and for political reason, you know, why would you want a, you know, a foreign denominated stablecoin running in your country, right? Right. Uh, so 
there's a lot of potential and opportunities there as well. We're working on a lot of partners uh, on that right now, obviously. Um, other asset classes include like, you know, precious metal, um, gold, silver, Both platinum. High time. High time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, gold is like pff, going off right now. Uh, and I know people originally was like, why are you just uh, tokenizing U.S. dollar? You know, U.S. dollar is fiat, Federal Reserve, fractional reserve banking, money printer goes, whatever, right? I was like, yeah. I know, I know, I know all that. But it's easy to start with dollar. So let me start there. I'm a startup for crying out loud. And then, you know, let me grow eventually. And now I'm tokenizing gold and other, you know, other stuff already. Yeah. So, uh, so we're getting there. Um I think the next step is, you know, we will start looking to securities as well. Uh, of course, in the United States, uh, to sell securities to U.S. investors, you have to go through regulated channel. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a signed partnership with, uh, you know, uh, partners that can enable us to do that. Uh, we have a partnership with Vertalo, which is an API that allows us to basically issue security token and list it for trading on regulated security exchanges or alternative trading system in the U.S. So if I wanted to tokenize like, you know, bonds or stocks or like real estate in the U.S. right now as a security token for any particular project, I can. Problem is, the market for that in the United States right now is like, Dismal. Yeah, there's still a lot more um, market awareness has to be brought to it before it can kind of Correct. catch any kind of legs. Correct. Now, however, offshore, the security token market, you know, I'm talking about the legit ones, not the scammy ones, right? Uh, yeah. The legit ones that are actually like, you know, kind of based out of Singapore or like Hong Kong where uh, there's some major name involved and they're, you know, tokenizing real estate and stuff. Those are actually going, they're getting, uh, you know, a decent amount of traction. And, you know, I think uh, in general, uh, going offshore, serving the international market and not serving the U.S. market enables a lot more opportunities and, you know, uh, potential for products. Uh, Because in the U.S., I can't, you know, it's no sense for me to tokenize securities. Going offshore, I can do that and, you know, do a lot of various structure products for international consumers instead of U.S. consumers. And, um, yeah, and, you know. It's an international that's, game, uh, man. Like, and that's why yeah, it's the international opportunity game. in crypto is so amazing. And it, in blockchain as well is that, like, it's it's borderless. It truly is can be anywhere and there's opportunities. And, and if you go run into a country where there's regulatory problems or issues that you're facing, you're just like, okay, I'll just go to this other country. There's going to let me run wild. And then eventually once the U S catches up or wherever, who's not currently using it eventually does, then you already have their infrastructure, everything already put in place. So you can sprint once everything catches up. So it's, it's a really, really, really good time to be in this space and creating these opportunities because at some point there's going to be a switch that turns where everyone's on the crypto blockchain, like just bandwagon. And when that happens, all of the companies who have been laying the ground, the groundwork and the foundations are just going to excel because they've already just been, been putting in the work, learn the lessons, hit the bumps in the road and, and are just ready to, to go and crush it. And so a, a final question that I kind of want to ask you really quickly is just, 2020 has been in a really interesting year to say the least. Um, what are some things in the, in the horizon in the next year to three years that you think people should be um, looking out for? Um, get ready for a bunch of crypto banks come in, regulated crypto banks uh, or digital, you know, trust company or banking company coming out. That's going to provide a lot of uh, innovative uh, products. Uh, get ready for some sort of regulatory Events happening with Tether because of the investigation going on, uh, good or bad, I don't know. I sure hope, you know, I do hope that, you know, nothing bad happened overnight because Tether is like 90% of the stable coin market right now and it's powering like all these exchanges and the ecosystem. So if something does happen to it overnight, we don't want that, right? Right. It's really bad. Like, you know, at least let it happen slowly or something, you know, but uh, uh, only time will tell. Uh, in addition to that, expect more, um, you know, uh, not so much utility token, but asset backed token coming out, whether it be yeah. security token that's actually backed by like, you know, stocks or bonds or something, uh, or, um, you know, real estate asset, uh, uh, precious metal, different type of asset classes, et cetera. For sure. Yep. 
Well, I, I really appreciate everything that you've dropped on us today. You've given us all a lot to think about and, and just so many nuggets of knowledge. But what is the final thought that you want to leave with all of our listeners here today? Um, final thought, huh? Hmm. Let me think about this one. Caught me off guard here. <laughs> <laughs> final thought. Well, I guess uh, now that, you know, the world is uh, going through COVID and this uh, international, this global recession, pay attention to what's going on in financial market because we're going through unprecedented time, right? And uh, my, my, my eyes are like always monitoring what's going on with uh, the S&P 500 and with, uh, you know, uh, economic indicators like unemployment and stuff. To, and you know the dollar bond rates and all that regular people don't need to do all that because that's like a whole lot of whatever but you know at least trying to be aware of what's going on and you know act accordingly because uh you know for example in the past month the u.s dollar has uh, appreciated a lot in the meantime gold you know gold and uh, bitcoin are starting to go up that's something you should pay attention to, you know, even as a regular person, like that's something that like you can comprehend, right? You know, your money is losing value and going something else is going up in value. You know, what's going on? Is this is something wrong? Uh, you know, <laughs> obviously something is wrong, but you know, what can I do to protect my money or prepare for this future potentially financial crisis? Well, we're already in a financial crisis. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're minting like money like no tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you know, if, um, how long that's going to keep up because basically all this money printer, uh, all this money printing only works as long as, you know, confidence in the U S government and the U S dollar and the U S military and all that stuff. Uh, and the U S economy remains right now, you know, the dollar losing strength that just indicated the world is losing confidence in the you know, U S right now. And it's, um, uh, you know, so what do you do in order to, you know, hedge against hedge that, against maybe it. even profit against that. Yeah. You know, just, just kind of keep that in mind. You know, don't, don't live through these times, like chilling, not caring and like, Oh, it'll figure itself out. Like, you know, it's just a flu. Don't worry about it. Right. <laughs> just, just <laughs> don't wear a damn mask for crying out loud. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So Crazy going back to the U S and like, you know, having to deal with all this, like back in Vietnam, like, you know, government didn't even eat the mandate. People just, ask her oh no it's just right anyway i could ramp i could ramble on about this forever <laughs> no but i think that's a, a good final thought just stay abreast of everything that's going on um yeah. there's a lot of things and if you're listening to this uh podcast you know we're, we're definitely keeping you up to date with what, what you should be paying attention to but i mean i think there's a lot that's going to be happening in the next couple months there are a lot of programs that are money's about to stop being sent out unless it is renewed um a lot of people are about to start getting evicted from their houses um from from landlords and this mortgage is about to be defaulted on and there is a giant storm brewing and it's just be prepared in your own way to handle what could happen on the end of it if things go south and i think that's just a good just make sure you're aware and prepared for everything like that so i appreciate that thought um so Corey, what are some ways that people can either connect with you and learn more about stably absolutely uh you can uh, contact me via email uh, Corey at stably.io. That's K O R Y at S T A B L Y dot I O. Or you can uh, contact me on uh, Telegram. My uh, handle is Corey Huang, uh, K O R Y H O A N G. Awesome. Well, again, Corey, I really do appreciate your time today. And for everyone listening, stay crypto current. Today's episode is brought to you by Stably, connecting real assets to the digital economy. Stably is creating faster, cheaper, secured, and borderless asset-backed stablecoins on the blockchain. Stably's USD, otherwise known as USDS, is currently the seventh largest USD-backed stablecoin in the world and is featured on major cryptocurrency exchanges such as Binance, Binance Dex, and Bittrex. For more information, please go to stably.io.